Hello, you cool cats and kittens. I have two words for you. Carol Baskin. Yep, it's happening. And you may be rolling your eyes, but would it really be a true crime series in the 21st century if we didn't talk about the mysterious disappearance of the crazy tiger-owning woman's husband, Don Lewis? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you must be living under a rock, but don't worry, I'll catch you up to speed. The year is 2021. We are living through a global pandemic, and there is one Netflix show that has taken the world by storm. Tiger King. In the docuseries, a woman named Carol Baskin owns a big cat rescue, but it's more like a cover-up for her big cat breeding facility. She started it with Don Lewis, her multi-millionaire husband, but after the two started fighting about the business, Don disappeared. And Carol didn't report him missing until two days later, which is already sus. After that, Carol cashed in on a thick life insurance policy and turned their business into the big cat rescue of her dreams. So is Carol responsible for wiping out her husband? Did she feed him to the tigers like everyone says she did? Let's find out. Carol and Dawn's story began on a street in Tampa, Florida in 1981. Carol was 19 years old at the time and she was in an abusive marriage with her first husband, Michael. So one night, Carol was in an argument with Michael and she thought he was about to attack her. So she threw a potato at him and ran out of the house barefoot. She threw a literal potato at him. Of all the things you could throw at someone, she chose a potato. After her whole potato throwing incident, Carol found herself walking down the street in the middle of the night crying. Sounds safe. Then comes her knight in shining armor, 42 year old Don Lewis, who drove up to Carol in his pickup truck. He was a millionaire who was obsessed with wild animals, and obsessed is an understatement. Like, he'd bring home baby alligators and keep them in the bathtub. He also loved collecting ferrets, raccoons, and other wild animals. So that night, Don was apparently on a drive after getting into a fight with his wife. And that wasn't the only woman in his life at the time. He was known for having multiple girlfriends. In fact, he was originally on his way to one of his girlfriend's houses when he drove up to Carol on the street. So Don was married and had three kids, but still thought it was a good idea to scoop up Carol and take her to a motel. Yo, this dude needs to get his priorities in check. Well, from that moment on, Carol became one of Don's many girlfriends. So there's bound to be some jealousy there. That definitely could have been a motive for what's to come. 10 years into Don and Carol's relationship, Don's wife had enough of the drama and decided to divorce him. She put up with her cheating husband for 10 years. I mean, I guess she had her kids to think about and he was a millionaire, so she probably just stuck around for that dough. Okay, so after Don's divorce, he officially married Carol and they started a business together. They bought a bunch of exotic cats and started an animal sanctuary called Wildlife on Easy Street. Oh no, that already sounds like a bad idea. A cheating man and a potato-wielding woman decide to start a business where they cage wild tigers. This is a recipe for disaster. But Don and Carol couldn't agree on how to run the business. Don wanted to breed the cats to sell them, and Carol apparently wanted to keep the cats they bred and make it a rescue. Uh, just because you keep the cats you bred doesn't make it a rescue. These cats should be out there living their best life in the wild, not in cages for you to make ticket sales off of. Ugh. This is making me so mad. So Don was trying to move their big cat business to Costa Rica. And in the months before his disappearance, he was going there pretty frequently. But these trips weren't always business related. Don was known for getting frisky with the ladies and he was so obsessed with doing so that he had a boo in Costa Rica that he would literally visit to get his fix when it was Carol's time of the month. Wait, this is crazy and so disgusting. Like the dude can't go one week without getting off of the woman. At this point, Don and Carol have been married for six years. Don wants to move their exotic cat breeding business to Costa Rica and even started transferring ownership of his Florida properties to his company in Costa Rica. Right before he went missing, he was about to leave on another trip there to sell cars and trucks and probably see his boo thing too. So here's what happened when Don Lewis disappeared. One August day in 1997, Don woke up super early to make a delivery in his big Dodge van. Of course he had a van, like major creeper vibes. According to Carol and Don's assistant, Anne, Don said he was waking up early to transport cars to Costa Rica. Anne talked to Don on a daily basis. He told her that day he was gonna get some VIN numbers and would call her back shortly. But he never called her back. After two days, Anne still hadn't heard from Don and she was starting to freak out. So she finally decided to reach out to Carol, who she hated. Anne asked Carol if she had seen Don. Carol said she hadn't seen him since he left in his van and asked Anne if she thought she should call the police. Uh, Duh, how is she not concerned that her husband has been missing for almost two days without telling her anything? So after talking to Anne, Carol finally called the police to report her husband as missing. This is two days after he was last seen, which automatically makes me think Carol did it. 
and I wonder what she was doing during those two days. Maybe hiding the evidence? That day, investigators found Dawn's van at an airport in Florida about 40 miles away from the cat rescue in Tampa. It was parked on the grass between a few planes, and the airport manager said it had been there for a couple of days. So this kind of makes sense because Don owned a bunch of planes and would sometimes take them out for a spin, even though his private pilot license was suspended. Well, he just sounds like a great guy overall, cheating on his many wives, breeding and selling wild cats, and now breaking the law to fly planes to probably meet up with one of his girlfriends. And how does one get their pilot license suspended? I wonder what happened there. So officials found his van and looked inside for evidence. But all they were able to find were the keys to the van on the floorboard. There were no other clues that hinted at where Don might be. Not even credit card transactions. I mean, other than the fact that he was at the airport and owned planes, so he literally could have flown anywhere in the world. If I were him, I would have gone to Greece. I mean, baklava and the beach. Thank you. At this point, it just looks like Don fled the country on a plane. There was no evidence to prove foul play. But then, detectives were tipped off about Don and Carol's relationship struggles. Two months before his disappearance, Don had gone to court to try and get a restraining order against Carol after she threatened his life. Wait, that is some tea. If Carol threatened to execute Don two months before he went missing, that means she definitely could have followed through with it this time and hid the evidence. This is wild. When he went to court, Don told the judge, Carol has gotten angry enough to threaten to kill me. She has a 45 revolver and she took my 357. Okay, so we know Carol had the motive, and now she has her hands on two possible weapons? Things aren't looking so hot for her right now. Despite Don's testimony, the judge didn't grant him the restraining order, and Don continued to live with Carol. How did the judge not give him the restraining order? Like, the woman told him she was going to knock him out and had multiple firearms to do it with. And this isn't the only restraining order that's been filed against Carol. The guy she was with after Don disappeared also tried to get one in 2002. In the guy's court papers, he wrote, I honestly fear I am in danger of death. He then wrote about a time when he asked her, what happens if your husband shows up now? To that, she said, dead body cannot talk. Yo, that seems like a pretty solid confession to me. But there's even more. According to Don's assistant, Don had brought up divorce multiple times with Carol which would have cost her a lot of money. But Carol claimed they weren't heading for divorce. Oh really? Because according to Don's assistant, you were. So someone must be lying here because nothing is adding up. Carol also believed Don had Alzheimer's or some other mental disorder and she said she was trying to get him help. I'm not sure what she considers help if she threatened to execute him. That doesn't seem like help to me. So with all of this background, Don's assistant, Anne, was convinced Carol was responsible for whacking out her boss and hiding the evidence. After Don was reported as missing, Anne took his restraining order paperwork to the police station as evidence. While she was at the station, the burglar alarm at Don's office went off. Carol apparently broke in with the help of Don's handyman and snatched a bunch of paperwork. Maybe Carol was in cahoots with the handyman? She definitely could have convinced her to let him in if she gave him a cut of the money. When Anne got back to the office, she said everything was gone, including Don's will and power of attorney, which Anne said Carol wasn't in charge of. Oh my gosh, this girl is out of her mind. And how weird is it that she didn't have a key to her own husband's office? That just shows how bad their marriage must have been. And it makes me wonder what he was hiding from her. Well, somehow the police said Carol's break-in was legal because he was her husband, which normally I'd buy, but Carol seems like a special kind of wife. After the incident, Carol brought forth what she said was Don's will and power of attorney that left her in charge of everything. But Don's ex-wife and daughters claim his signature on those papers were forged. Ooh, this is tricky here because now we're dealing with his violent current wife and his jealous ex-wife, both of whom probably love money, which we know Don had a lot of. So how do we know who's telling the truth here? Once investigators got word about Carol and Don's rocky relationship, they searched their property. They couldn't find any evidence or signs of foul play. Officials also conducted a three-week investigation in Costa Rica where they didn't find any clues, but they were able to conclude that Don was definitely seeing other women and engaged in questionable business practices. So maybe Don was caught in a bad business exchange. He could have sold a tiger to someone who wasn't ready to take the responsibility of raising a wild animal with sharp teeth and claws. So since Don wasn't anywhere to be found in Florida or Costa Rica, Carol came up with the idea that her husband could be in a Mexico prison. How does Mexico play a role in any of this? I feel like she's just reaching for leads to send investigators on a wild goose chase. 
After she made her Mexican jail claim, Carol told a news reporter, I can't think of anything else that would keep him away this long. I find it hard to believe he'd walk away and leave me. Girl, he tried to file a restraining order against you and wanted a divorce. How is that not clear enough? Carol later stuck with the claim that Don must have flown to Costa Rica to live off the grid. Okay, so after all of their searching, the only thing investigators had to go off of was the parked van and one other sketchy piece of evidence. That one month after Don disappeared, he somehow shipped two wildcats somewhere, but they couldn't find out where. Okay, so maybe Don just wanted to escape his cray cray wife since he couldn't get a restraining order and divorce her. He could have escaped to another country on his plane and had someone send him his favorite cats or something. But Don's first wife and three kids were convinced Carol snuffed her millionaire husband for obvious reasons. Don's ex-wife pointed out that the planes he flew couldn't have gotten him to Costa Rica without stopping multiple times for gas. Which is still a possibility, but I feel like it's weird to stop a bunch of times on a flight. And wouldn't there have been a way to trace his stops if that's really what he did? And Don's ex-wife wasn't the only one who thought Carol did it. A woman who was married to Don's handyman, Kenny, also thought the same thing. She said that two days before Don disappeared, Kenny came home in Don's van and asked her to unload a bunch of firearms from the car. He said they were holding on to them for Carol. He also told her, Don's gone and I don't want you talking about him. Okay, how is Carol not arrested at this point? There is so much evidence against her, it's not even funny. Well, whether it's true or not, this woman also mentioned seeing a large freezer with a padlock that showed up on her and Kenny's porch during the time of Don's disappearance. She said she was too scared to ask Kenny about it, but claimed the freezer was gone a week later. If she was too scared to ask her own husband a question, that meant Kenny could have had anger issues and taken it out on Don, so maybe he's the perp? But that's not all this woman claimed. She said when she got in an argument with Kenny, he told her, if you try to leave me again, I will put you in the grinder like I did Don. Stop, this is crazy. And it also brings us to my favorite theory surrounding Don's case. A lot of people, including Don's family, internet fanatics, and the infamous Joe Exotic, all believe Carol terminated her husband and sent him through a meat grinder, fed him to the tigers. Which sounds insane, but that seemed to be Carol's brand. And Carol did have a meat grinder that she used to process meat for her tigers. So how do we know she didn't slip Don in there one time? But the sheriff on the case mentioned the meat grinders had been removed from Don and Carol's property a few weeks before his disappearance. So they knocked that idea off the table. Carol definitely could have just moved the meat grinder somewhere else though. Can they get a new set of investigators on this case? This sheriff seems a bit oblivious. Well, despite all this evidence that is literally screaming Carol's name, she was no longer considered a primary suspect and the case remains unsolved to this day. Here are some of the other theories aside from the super epic tiger snack one. Don was pushed out of one of his planes. Don crashed his plane on the way to Costa Rica. He made it to Costa Rica and is now living there with a new identity and he was pushed in a septic tank by Carol. I don't know. I still think the first theory takes the cake. Literally. But really, just think about it for a second. This woman threw a potato at her first husband, so she could have fed her second husband to tigers. And don't forget, her third boo tried to get a restraining order against her. All I've got to say is her current husband better sleep with one eye open. Thanks for watching, everyone, and be sure to keep an eye out for flying potatoes.